Building a standard Martin guitar can take between six and eight weeks, with the more complex or ornate guitars taking up to six months. On a good day, the team at the Nazareth factory can build more than 250 guitars, but you can't rush quality. First, just to let you know, over on Nebula, you will have first look at my new documentary, The History of Martin Guitars. They have grown to become the most respected maker of acoustic guitars in the history of the instrument. Martin's influence is huge. I've been a fan and player for a number of years and wanted to show my appreciation by making this documentary properly with expert insight, access to some of their most prized guitars, and a lot of time and effort has been spent on it. For early access, there is a link in the description. Now, where do they begin? It all starts with the wood, lots of it. Martin has an offsite storage warehouse with a separate warehouse section for when the lumber is scheduled to be used. The factory in Nazareth uses around a quarter of a million board feet of lumber every year. The backs and sides of a Martin are usually made from hardwoods, like mahogany or rosewood, with the tops made from spruce. Different types of mahogany come in as long pieces, and it's then fashioned into backs, sides, tops, and necks. Rosewood is processed out in the field after it's cut down and sent into the factory as back and side material. The lumber must be dried out before it can be cut. It's dried out over the course of several months through a combination of climate-controlled storage rooms and kiln drying, Here's the acclimating room. Once the wood is cut into workable sizes, it'll come here. It's temperature and humidity controlled and should stay at around 50% humidity and around 70 degrees Fahrenheit. These rooms have very limited access to ensure everything is kept as it should be. That wood stacked on the right is separated by dowels to let the air flow through. So every part stays at the proper humidity and doesn't start to grow mold. Once it's dry, the wood is ready to be cut the top and back of a Martin are each made from a single panel of wood split in two, with both pieces carefully checked for flaws and matched up based on their colour and grain, so the guitar makes sense from a visual standpoint. This process is called book matching. The two sides of the top are shaved flat, then clamped together on a glue reel, nice and tight. Any excess is either recycled or used for smaller inlay parts. Once they're dried out, the tops are held up to a light in order to check for defects in a process called candling. Back in the day, luthiers would check the wood by candlelight. They make sure there's no hidden knots below the surface because they'll be sanded several times during the process and they don't want any nasty surprises. Laser cutters are used to cut out the particular model's shape. Lasers are new and efficient technology that not only save wasted wood, but make it safer for employees too. Martin are constantly finding new ways to reduce waste as part of their ongoing sustainability effort. Necks are marked out depending on the size of the billet, with the lumber cut into a parallelogram so as to maximise the yield and reduce that waste. Rosettes are the name for the ornate decoration around the sound hole, usually made from wood, mother of pearl or plastic. Luthiers use a fly cutter to create the circle, with the trim inlaid by hand. It's highly skilled work that requires specialist tools, it's sanded flush, then inspected. Martin uses a custom proprietary adhesive for all their binding and rosetting. It's great for the plastic to wood adhesion. Bracing is one of the most important stages of the build because it holds the guitar's shape. Tightened strings can exert an awful lot of pressure on the body, so an X-shaped bracing helps keep it together. Thin pieces of spruce are glued onto the underside of the top. Bracing is done by hand to make sure it's exactly the right shape. Those chisels are very sharp and dangerous, but the technicians make it look easy and never dent the wood. Matching side panels are loaded into a bending press, which softens the wood using heat and steam so that it's flexible enough to be shaped into a curve. The two halves are glued and clamped into place, making sure it's angled just right. Glue holds the top and bottom of the guitar together. A ribbon made of cedar is glued along the side edges with small grooves cut into it that allow it to bend. The trim around the guitar's edges, usually made from plastic or wood, helps protect it from changes in humidity and any scrapes and bumps. A channel is cut into the edges of the guitar in a process called freezing that the binding can fit into. If the guitar is having decorative trim, they'll cut grooves next to the binding as well. Way harder than it looks. The body is sanded several times using a series of increasingly fine grains to get rid of any imperfections. This technician is using their hips to move the bar forward, then they apply pressure to the sanding belt. 
The bodies are hung on hooks and sprayed with a thin layer of special nitrocellulose by a machine arm. It'll dry nice and hard and form a protective shield over the wood. Each guitar gets multiple coats. Too much can affect the guitar's sound, so it has to be just right. Once it's dry, it goes into a climate-controlled room to be cured and sanded again to remove any bumps or imperfections. Martin used three stages of polishing in order to get the perfect shine. A robot arm uses a suction cup to pick up the body and hold it against a buffing wheel covered with wax-loaded cotton cloth. It's got sensors that stop it from pressing too hard. Next up, a smaller buffing wheel, and then a hand polish, using lamb's wool. Each neck is shaped before it goes on the CNC. It's done on a bandsaw by hand and marked out with a pencil and a template. Makers then use a computer-operated router to finish carving out the neck and the fretboard. The fretboard is made of hard, wearing ebony and precisely lined with the frets. Nowadays, all of the necks will go through some sort of CNC cutting process, but they also all get finished by hand, so every neck is a little bit different. Narrow slots are cut into the fretboard, then frets are added. Fret wire is placed in each of the grooves. A machine then secures them in place at the correct height. The neck and fretboard are glued together, then sanded and polished. A steel truss rod helps keep the neck perfectly straight, counteracting any stress from taut strings or humidity. Every Martin guitar is carefully scheduled. The body and neck go through their own processes, then they meet again in prefit to make sure they're a good match. Once any final adjustments are made, there's no switching them out. They're made to be together. It's time for these necks and bodies to get married. No going back now. They're joined with a compound dovetail joint and glued into place. Martin has an in-house tooling and machinery department that carries on C.F. Martin's extraordinary legacy. It's the secret to a good, consistent quality guitar. The pocket for the dovetail sits exactly where it needs to be every time. If you see a bolt-on neck, you know it's not a real Martin. Technicians then blend the neck and fingerboard so there's no sharp edges. The bridge is where the strings attach to the body, just below the sound hole. A technician uses a gauge to get this placement just right. Anything less than perfect, and the sound will be off. It's time to look at the frets again. A chamber called a plec simulates the tension the strings will put on the body and neck and maps out a 3D model. If the frets are too high or too low in certain spots, they'll be sanded down to the correct height. This helps avoid any unwanted buzzing. We're nearly there. This guitar is now ready to be strung. The Martin factory uses more than half a million feet of wire each year, with each guitar taking about 15 feet of steel string. A technician stretches each of the six steel strings from the bridge up to the metal pegs at the head. It's then tuned up and left to settle for a few days. Time for the final inspection. Many of Martin's employees are also musicians. It's hard not to be with all these lovely guitars lying around. But every employee in final inspection is of course a guitarist. After a few days resting time, the guitars are played to make sure they pass quality control. This one's ready to go out into the world. As always, I really appreciate you watching this video until the end. Over on Nebula, you will have first look at the 45 minute documentary I, with a lot of help from my team and Martin Guitar, made about the full history of this legendary acoustic company. There is a link in the description below. Massive thanks to Martin Guitar for having me at the factory and letting me film the whole process. Also, massive thanks to Keaton for the extra videography skills. Okay, over and out. But as always, I'll be seeing you here very, very soon.